Instead of this animal pen, try out this diagonal design. Or instead of building a roller coaster over water, you should bounce it across like so. And today we're covering the cheap yet easy ways to upgrade your world. And hey, according to the YouTube king, no one's ever subscribed to the channel using their right pinky finger. So if you're up to the challenge, point your fifth digit to that red sub button below. It's free and it helps out a ton. A secret entrance is a great addition for your house, but with redstone in that, it could be an expensive one. Enter the painting. Now I know paintings are the white bread of the secret entrance world, but this uses had an idea on how to spice it up. And by adding simple things like trapdoor gaps, specific jumps, and slabs to crouch under, we can make this old favorite a lot more effective. And that way we make sure that this painting doesn't go to waste. And we do it all without needing to learn a full course on redstone. Clearly, it's tough to build anything realistic in Minecraft, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't try where we can. So for a start, let's take these hillsides and transform them into a classic grassy hill. See, since there's only grass on the top texture of our grass blocks, then a simple solution would be to take some moss and place it around the dirt parts of the hill like so. And that way the distracting dark brown dirt gets replaced with a more complimenting green. And while it's probably still too boxy to look realistic up close, if you zoom out, it's a marked improvement for sure. And it'll be worth trying at your next hillside cottage. Lava seems like a pretty expensive fuel to use, but in recent updates, it might be more economical than coal. Consider this. If you're having difficulty finding coal ore nearby, then this simple dripstone setup lets us make a renewable lava farm for a fuel source. And since lava burns for 1000 seconds, by the time that your fuel's up, one of these basins should be be good to go for a refill. So while it might require some startup iron to get this running, it could be a solid fuel farm for your early game exploits. Beds are a staple of the game, and they won't be going away anytime soon, though a little variety would be nice. So what about a sleeping bag? Well, we can pull this off by solely placing slabs around the rim of the bed, which is super easy and it doesn't require a lot of material. And while I'm not saying that this is going to work out if you place it in a castle, it might fit in for a temporary base in the mines. But for any bedrock players, beware, because you might not be able to respawn on top of the bed like we can in Java. You never want your house to feel too cramped. So to make every block count, why not opt for trap doors instead of blocks for your walls? Now, hear me out. The idea here is actually pretty solid because while the regular blocks fill up the space, trap doors take up just a fraction, which makes for a roomy inside without sacrificing the exterior. And as long as no hooligans come by and flip open the trap doors, your base should be just as safe as it was before. By now, you've probably seen one of these pianos before. And while they're nice, obtaining just one dragon head in survival can be tricky, let alone this many. So lucky for us, us, by using looms and some wood, we can save ourselves the trouble. And since the texture of the loom looks like piano keys from this angle, we're capable of building a much cheaper version of the traditional dragon head approach. And while it might lack some of the detail, it is easy to make. And that way we can also save those dragon heads for something extra special. When you're making a big build, it can be common to use any and all blocks of scaffolding. Except, oddly enough, scaffolding, because bamboo can be tough to find. But while dirt or cobblestone are the usual suspects, consider snow for a second. Because with a simple farm like this, we can power the system and let the snowballs flow into our chests. And hey, being able to get all of this without wearing down our shovel is another welcome addition. Just know that this only works on bedrock where the snow layers break into snowballs when they're moved like so. You know, some say it's a small world, but I think this might be smaller than what they had in mind. Though with a cartography table, it's much easier to have a globe in your house. And all you need to do that is some dark oak to go around. That way, the table itself can fade into the background blocks and let that globe really shine. And even though it doesn't spin very well, it does make for unique decoration. So without custom player heads in survival, this is the closest we've got for that. What's the best way to get sugarcane? Well, this user might have the right idea, and it's cheap too. See, when you etch out a design like this in the ground and then place one block of water in the center, the water will space out evenly throughout the canal. And that, folks, lets us plant our sugarcane at maximum capacity. So if you're playing something like Skyblock where you need to be real picky on how you use your water, this might be a way to cut back without slashing your paper profits. Making a mini game in Minecraft can be quite a technical problem, and that's a no small part thanks to the tremendous amount of command blocks and redstone that these things require. So if you're like me and you can't manage to pull that off in your survival world, this community pick might be a good call. Here, we can just use differently colored candles to mark the buildings for a game of Monopoly. And then if you just have each player move to the space that they're on, this might make for a simple yet effective game to play in your realm. Just make sure you don't ruin any friendships. Spamming around a bunch of torches is effective, but ugly. I mean, let's just be honest. But thankfully, with the new mob spawning changes in 1.18, we now have a way to spawn proof our base with a few pieces of glow lichen. See, instead of placing these in the caves, we can use them over the top of the soil like so to make an effective yet subtle way to keep the monsters at bay. And for the right atmosphere, that does offer a nice change of pace. So if you have a farm as efficient as ill mangoes, that should be an easy switch. Keeping your animals in the pen could be a real pain. So to cut back on materials and still keep them in place, try this pattern. Apparently when you place down fence posts diagonally, it still keeps the animals in. This is because the animals are registered to be one block wide, but using them diagonally goes less than that space, which will prevent our animal friends from leaving. But if you build this, just keep in mind, the babies are still able to 
to escape. So if you do this, just make sure to look out for the little rascals. It's tough to make Minecraft feel scary. I mean, this is what the world looks like. What would you expect? But to add that vicious flare to your nether base, these nether warp blocks can really sell the image. Taken after this user, we use the block for something of a blood canal to fill out our altar room. And if anything, it lets us finally have a use for nether warp blocks since uh, we can't uncraft them in a nether warp. And when they're this easy to come by in a crimson forest, I think that's a win-win. Have you ever thought of using a minecart as a boat? Because as it turns out, it is possible. See, if we were to drop our minecart track into a roll of soul sand bubbles like so, we can effectively bounce across the body of water without any rails, which is a lot cheaper than building a full track across the ocean, let me tell ya. But not only that, but we're also sure to have a good time while we ride it. What looks different between these two logs? Well, even if you can't put your finger on it from this angle, you might feel that this one is a bit more realistic. So, how does it work? Well, by placing an item frame on the top like so, we get a sneaky bit of detail to our tree trunks. And with this, we might be able to get away with leaving a few more trees chopped down like so in the forest. And hey, it looks better than yet another barren forest biome, so it might be worth trying. Candles are a relatively new creation brought to Minecraft in the 1.17 update. And seeing as they're new, the capabilities and new uses for them are still being explored. Take this for example. Here, this user found a way to take our candles and put them on a lever for a shelf of sorts. And while it might seem silly, it definitely is possible. All we need to do is place down a support block and then lay as many candles on top of it as you want. And then, even when you break the block, they'll stay in place, letting us use the lever underneath for our own kind of decoration. This user used an armor stand as a lamp, which sounds ridiculous, but consider the benefits. Now, obviously, we need to light up our base, but standard torches are just so boring. So for that, we'll create a much more stylish way to light up our home. But instead of using expensive blocks like glowstone or sea lanterns, we can do this all with a piston and some slabs like so. And that seems a much more economic solution if you ask me. So as great as those lamps look, this is a welcome replacement for sure. We've all seen chests by this point. And more accurately, we've seen what it looks like to have way too many chests. So this offers a way to make that chest monster of yours look a lot more presentable. Using the small space left between the chests, we can place item frames inside to make it seem as if they're glued together. Which is a subtle fix, but it might be all you need to spruce up your standard storage. And hey, the item frame inside might also be a secret hiding spot, if you ever need that too. Wood is a tremendously common building block, but maybe not like this. Though while this seems rudimentary, it might be ingenious. See, by placing a ring of saplings like so, we can bone meal them up to adulthood and all of a sudden have a ready-made shack to use. Now, I'll admit it's by no means a looker, but it's definitely functional. And for quite a bit of safety before nightfall, that might be all you need. And hey, it still technically counts as a tree house, so that's got to amount to something. Furnaces are functional, but they're not the most interesting. So this offers just the way to turn your bland setup into a top tier grill. See, if we were to place our food into item frames like so and lay out some rails over the top, we get ourselves a head start towards getting that family gathering going. And if we want to go a bit further, we can even put some actual furnaces underneath, adding in some extra functionality to boot. Trap doors are a solid way to come and go when it comes to a hidden base, but when used in the wrong spot, they do stick out, like a lot, which is why this big drip leaf might be a better alternative. See, drip leaf placed like so forces us to crawl when it pops back up, which means it works as an automatic trap door of sorts to allow us to enter our secret stash. And hey, since these can be waterlogged as well, they'll look even less noticeable in a local pond, letting us swim to safety without any of the complicated redstone or trapdoor eyesores. And with that, folks, have a good one, all right?